I, I have to tell you something. A, 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 a post, you know, the posterity and the question of survival of Yiddish. My father, as I told you, is the only survivor of a big family that, you know, killed uh, until the last one in '41. Um, except for one aunt, the younger sister of his mother, my my grand my grandmother Dvoire, her name was Auntie Frida, Fride, okay, because in Polish Frida, okay. Auntie Frida survived the Holocaust. She was hidden by Ukrainians. When she uh, came out of the hiding, she found out that uh, her three little children were murdered. Her husband didn't survive. And then she, like many people like that, he, she bumped into an, an, another guy, my, un, my, my uncle Lonia, okay, from Chernovitz, and they, you know, got married and then went to the other part of the Ukraine, the Soviet Union, and as you remember, a couple of thousands of, hundred thousands of Jews actually, came back from Russia in the mid-50s to Poland, and most of them ended up in Palestine, in Israel those days. Okay, my father, after 16 years of separation, reunited with the only survivor of his family, Auntie Frida. She spoke seven languages. With her, I spoke Yiddish all the time, okay? And she died a year ago at the age of 101 in the Israeli beach town, Natania. And every Friday morning, she would go to the barber shop and have her, you know, had her hair, you know, arranged. And she would call me up and say, Anekume. She meant to say, this is my revenge on Hitler that I go to the, you see what I mean? So this is one of the funny, it's not funny at all, of course. And uh, in a funeral, uh, we, we said things in Yiddish, but only people who were over 50, uh, over 60 actually, uh, would understand what we were talking or what we were saying. So she was the last, uh, you know, speaker of Yiddish except for my father and my family.